You mentioned that you have a five month old daughter who does not like to be away from you. So the one silver lining in all of this is that you can just bask in the sweetness that you are the most important thing to her. And from an evolutionary standpoint, um, separation anxiety makes sense. Why would a defenseless baby want to be away from the person who cares for them and nurtures them and feeds them? So um, separation anxiety is real and the earliest onset is usually six to seven months and it usually peaks between 10 months and 18 months. It starts to happen naturally as a baby understands that there are certain permanent people and things in their lives. And when those things that they rely on and that are familiar to them are removed or gone from their situation, then they get frustrated and upset and they cry. You mentioned that you talked with your pediatrician about your concerns and they said this was probably a phase that would just pass and, and you'd have to put up with it for now and that that's probably pretty true. Separation anxiety is something that will eventually pass but I had a baby like this of my own and I know from a, from being a mother how how frustrating this can be for both babies and parents and it's hard if you feel like you can't leave them for any reason. Um, there are some things that you can do in order to help your baby and yourself cope until they've gotten over the separation anxiety phase. One of the first things that you can do is get your baby girl used to being away from you on occasion when you're actually still home with her. So let's say that you're both in one room, you're folding laundry, she's playing with toys and she gets distracted, crawls into another room to play with another toy. You know that she's going to be safe in there. She's not in harm's way. Let her go off and be by herself for a little while and wait a few minutes before you go get her or talk to her. And this will naturally, as she initiates the separation, help her get used to being apart from you on occasion. Let's say that you're folding laundry, she's playing with toys again, and you need to go into the other room to grab something. Don't take her with you every time, but instead say, mommy's going to go grab this and I'll be right back. And as you prove to her that you're leaving, but then coming back, that this will help her trust you when you're leaving for longer periods of time and you tell her that you're leaving, she'll know that you're going to come back to her. Now, you did say that in the past you've tried, lead, tried leaving her with people and she cried for, for up to three hours at a time. And um, one thing that you can do is A, don't limit the number of outings you have without her just because of this. Um, do find opportunities to separate yourself from her and it can just be for short periods of time. This is going to get her used to it and it's going to allow you some freedom to have some time alone. Maybe just set like a 30 minute to an hour block each week. Find a reliable babysitter, someone that she can get used to. This could be a family member or a friend. Um, or it could be someone that you pay or someone that you don't depending on how comfortable you are with the person. But have them come over a few minutes before you plan on leaving and allow your baby girl some time to interact with the babysitter before you leave. And when you leave, don't sneak out, say goodbye. Again, this is part of her trusting you and um, she'll know, she'll start to learn that you will be back. And with repeated exposure to these types of situations and with time, she will overcome the separation anxiety. One other important piece of the puzzle is examine your own reaction. It can be really heartbreaking to leave your child with someone when they're screaming or when they have to be peeled off of you. Um, you feel really bad, but examine your own emotions. Make sure that you keep it light and that you're happy. You react in a very friendly manner with the caregiver. You're very positive. And when your baby cries, make sure that you don't cry because they're going to look at your reaction and that will have a lot to do with how they feel. So if you're happy, they'll learn to be happy too. I hope that these suggestions are helpful to you and if you have more questions in the future for me, please feel free to ask them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Intermountain Moms and recommend us to your friends and family too.